Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to, so far, the last um, advanced tutorial episode of War in the East 2. And of course in this tutorial I could not talk about um, how to conduct sieges uh, in War in the East 2, uh, especially if you are playing as the Axis. And the reason of, of this is why when you're playing as the Soviets you are normally facing heavily fortified positions um, of, of your enemies in 1944-1945. And uh, uh, by that time you will have plenty of the so-called artillery uh, divisions. And those are an absolute beast. They can, uh, they can only perform... Um, they, they can do both hasty and deliberate attacks, but uh, they can perform a deliberate attack along two hexes like if you have it here you can attack this hex this this hex here this one here this one here or, or even this one here so they are really a a tremendous um tool that you you, you have to use when facing um city fortified cities uh, or uh, fortresses around the um the the map so I thought it, it makes no no sense to, to, to make a tutorial on how to use artillery divisions. Just remember, you can do deliberate attacks between um, two, two hexes. While the situation is, of course, much more challenging and much more um, exciting, if you, if you like to say this, for the axis. Because for the axis, you, you, you don't have artillery divisions, uh, but you have other tools. Uh, to perform sieges. And in particular, I'm referring to the sieges of Odessa, the siege of uh, Leningrad, and um, the, the siege of Sevastopol. I mentioned these three in this order because um, with, with an extensive micromanagement and um, a careful planning of your campaigns, uh, you can, ideally, when you're playing the Grand Campaign, uh, you can uh, capitulate Odessa, uh, Leningrad, and even Sevastopol ahead of their um, historical um, uh, capture dates, even because Leningrad was never captured. Um, any, anyway, um, so to perform sieges, you need um, two types, or let's say two slash three types of um, support units. Um, the first type of support units are the pioneers. Uh, let me see if we have exactly so. Um, actually, you can go to the um, commander's report and we can select uh, engineers and not the ones on map. And we can just select the ones of Germany because that's what, what we want. And um, yeah, so basically these are the support units that you want to have attached to um, the ideally in this case the um, HQ of the 11th army uh, that then you can re redistribute to your infantry divisions when you are storming uh, Odessa and then you can detach again and reattach to the uh, 18th army when you are storming um, uh, Leningrad. Pioneers are incredibly powerful and extremely useful in dealing with uh, um, fortified um, positions. Um, the other tool, the other support unit that you can um, uh, consider using are the uh, flamethrower tanks. Um, okay, so uh, very briefly again. Um, Exactly, these. Uh, Germany starts with uh, three. Actually, we can even type the, the name Flammpanzer. Exactly, so G Germany starts with uh, three uh, flamethrower uh, battalions. Uh, one of these will be sent to... Um, uh, will be sent to... France, yeah, exactly this one, the 102nd Flam uh, Flam um, Flampanzer Battalion will be sent to France um, on on the sixth turn. So it's not really very useful. Uh, you can, however, bring it back to the to the map if you want. Uh, but also because 
Uh, I never tried that because it's equipped mostly with uh, captured uh, French tanks, and that's why I, I've always been using uh, the uh, 100th and the 101st. These are also very useful um, support units to um, to 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 face. Uh, so that you have to use when you are facing uh, heavily fortified uh, positions. And the last type of um, support units um, are all the units um, carrying these um, elements, namely the siege, the, the super heavy artillery. So the uh, 355 millimeter howitzers, the, uh, the, the squad howitzer, and the, the two beasts, the 600 millimeters um, Karl. Um, Motors. Now, I have to mention one important thing that you have to keep in mind when planning your siege operations. Um, because of, of the way that um, combat works, um, Odessa, that, that, is, that is classified as a city hex, and as well as um, Leningrad here, this is actually heavy, herb, heavy urban, um, the, in these hexes, combat occurs at very close range. However, this does not include the artillery. So, if you want to attack Leningrad and Odessa with, um, with the siege artillery and the siege mortars and the heavy howitzers, uh, you may lose them. Because I know it's, it's a big bug of, of the game. And uh, yeah, if you attack urban and city hexes, um, you may lose them, either because they're damaged or because they are just gone. And I know that doesn't make any, doesn't make any sense, and I hope that at some point the developers will address this uh, this issue. So, against this sign Leningrad, you should only use Pioneers and uh, Flamethrower tanks. And this also puts some kind of pressure on you, because the, uh, the Flamethrower tanks um, will be gone uh, by turn 28. And uh, that's not all, because um, before going, leaving you to the uh, how I managed to, to capture Odessa, Leningrad and Sevastopol in three different campaigns in uh, single player, there is, there is one more thing that I want to uh, show you. So this is taken from my... Um, so this is taken from my uh, attempt of uh, showing you how, how you can take Odessa, um, even when playing on the... Uh, impossible difficulty ahead of, a, of the historical uh, capturing date. Um, the trick that you should use is to literally fill up with pioneers all the infantry divisions that are going to take part into the um, assault. In this case I had the um, 11th army. Maybe we can have it here. Uh, we can see it here. Um, okay, H, Army Group South, 11th Army, and uh, yes, yeah, so you see the, the the 11th Army is filled up with pioneers, and then basically every oh not the 183rd, but every infantry division of the 11th Army has three um, pioneer. Um, uh, battalions, with the ex exception of the 170 that is um, filled up with uh, two flamethrower tank uh, battalions and one pioneer, of course. And this is really to maximize the um, participation in combat and the efficiency of your pioneers in reducing um, the um, fortifications. In this case, I in one single attack, I managed to bring down the um, fortification level, which which is 4, from 4 to 0. Uh, again, by massing um, pioneers, flamethrowers. I, I did the, the mistake of uh, using heavy uh, the, the heavy artillery. And if we have a look at the details here, uh, ground losses, we can have a look and see that I, I had two 600mm Carl Siege motors, and they both got damaged. So. That's, that's a pity, because now I, I cannot use any more these two support units. While vice versa, against Sevastopol, which is a... Um, oh, which is a rough type hex, and against Uraniumbaum, which is a, a heavy wood 
heavy woods exactly you can use the siege mortars and the heavy artillery and um yeah with this i think that's all for this brief introduction and i leave you guys to the video and to 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 show you how i managed in three different attempts to to capture odessa leningrad and sevastopol in 1941 using the strategy uh, that i've just described to you thank you very much for watching thank you very much for supporting the channel this will be uh, let's say the the last advanced tutorial episode uh, But if you folks have any new topic that you would like me to bring on the channel Just let me know in the comments and I will be happy to satisfy you until then my friends I wish you the best and now enjoy the video all right folks um, Instead of showing you the boring battles of how I managed to win against Odessa, Leningrad and Sebastopol I thought about doing a kind of storytelling uh, with some screenshots uh, to just kind of yeah exactly tell you the story of how I managed to win and first of all besiege and win the the, the sieges of Odessa, Leningrad, and uh, Sevastopol. It was like a, a learning curve, and after each siege, I did learn plenty of new things. And um, let's start by this uh, by the siege of, of Odessa. So. Um, officially, the, the siege of Odessa began on July 27th, 1941, on turn number six, when uh, the, the the ninth infantry, uh, the ninth Romanian infantry division, um, severed the last railway connection between Odessa and the the rest of the Soviet Union. Um, then I consolidated these gains, and on um, turn number seven, the entire second Romanian army corps just uh, surrounded uh, Odessa from land. Uh, but Odessa was still being resupplied by sea because my Luftwaffe and the Romanian Air Force were still busy uh, providing support uh, to the troops fighting in um, central and western Ukraine. Uh, then the uh, one important thing was that the um, Romanian uh, Railroad, Railroad Command um, fixed the entire railway between Yazi, Chisinau and uh, Tiraspol and then uh, as soon as Tiraspol was uh, repaired, I built a depot and I brought in the uh, HQs of the 11th Army and of these two uh, Army Corps. And as you can see, um, I was quite happy to see that some freight was already being delivered to uh, Tiraspol. And um, from there, I moved the entire 11th um, uh, Army, uh, say, far away from Odessa, while I kept the uh, Romanians uh, still close to the city to also to get a, an idea of how strong the um, defenders of the city uh, were and uh, then I just waited to, to, to allow my um, 11th army to uh, regain some supplies and uh, combat preparation points and um, also importantly I've set the 11th army to supply priority 4 to just give some extra say uh, yeah goodies and uh, tools to these men and then I also brought in from the uh, first Luftflotte the Fliegerführer Ostsee as well as I, re I redeployed the fourth Flieger Corps with the 27th KG and the 77th uh, Jagdgeschwader uh, and then with the with the 27th Kampgeschwader and the Fliegerführer Ostsee that this one was e equipped with mines I, I kept interdicting um, these two hexes, which were the only hexes through which Odessa can be uh, resupplied uh, by sea. And by doing so, I completely surrounded and isolated um, uh, Odessa. And to, to, to speed things up, I even brought from Western, uh, from sorry, from Eastern Poland the 51st and the 54th Kamkeshwara. And these were actually equipped, well, I, I equipped them with um, the one, one ton. Uh, bombs because uh, they turned out to be very effective against um, heavily uh, fortified uh, positions and as you can see after what let's say one week of uh, bombing I, I could inflict quite some severe losses to the um, defenders um, at, the, at the price of only six um, uh, airplanes and that was I must say a very uh, unexpected and very good uh, result and um, having bombed the garrison for one week and then having attacked it with the entire um, 11th army filled up with pioneers and uh, flamethrower tanks 
I managed to uh, win um, the Battle of Odessa by r reducing the fortification from level 4 to, to level 0 in one single shot. And now let's hope... Uh, let, let's hop in to, to the Siege of Leningrad. Now, the, um, let's say, the operations to besiege Leningrad began once again in a different campaign on uh, turn uh, number 6. And they began when the... after the, the, the fourth panzer group, the one here in uh, this dark pink, um, took Peskov and then uh, launched a coordinated attack with the 18th army and with the 3rd panzer group to surround these and these amount of red army divisions. And uh, at the end of the campaign I checked and in these two pockets there were 24 uh, red army divisions. So that was not too bad um, after all. And um, the, the the 4th panzer group on turn number 6 uh, first of all received some um, uh, some the, the three infantry divisions that are normally attached to the 23rd um, Army Corps that is now that, that is at the beginning of the game the reserve of Army Group North and with these three infantry divisions I opened the breach between Peskov and the other city down here and then I just rushed my panzers and motorized uh, divisions into this breach. The 6th Panzer took Novgorod, the 36th Motorized Infantry Division took um, Staraya Rusa, this uh, city here. The 3rd Motorized Division uh, protected this uh, kind of gap in between, and the 1st um, the Panzer Division, hidden behind this Army Corps HQ, took uh, the No. And this was a very big push, uh, which of course to which, of course, the, the Soviet uh, responded by, by deploying tons of uh, units because this is how the AI is doing it and in uh, in all response I brought forward the the third panzer group of General Hots. I deployed here the 9th army and the 16th army uh, was moved to protect both flanks uh, the uh, northwestern flank and also the um, south uh, eastern one and uh, um, uh, when I, I after let's say some uh, some turns, I just let my third uh, Panzer group uh, recover and rest until the third Panzer group again uh, once again breached the line. Uh, the first one to move were the motorized infantry divisions, supported by the infantry of the uh, 16th Army, and also to reduce the, the maluses of attacking of with the formations of different uh, army groups I even attached the third panzer group to army group north and then uh, the motorized infantry secured the perimeter while the 19th and the 12th panzer divisions uh, uh, let's say sealed the pocket by linking up with the 11th infantry division of the 18th um, army then I consolidated my uh, my gains and then I cleared up this uh, pocket with the infantry of the 16th and 18th uh, army. Meanwhile, the, um, the 4th Panzer Group once again uh, broke through the uh, Soviet lines here and then once again the, the, the 6th Panzer Division isolated Leningrad from the rest of the mainland Russia by taking this hex east of Schlüsselburg. And uh, uh, yes, the uh, Red Army, as I think it's, it, the AI just shortened its lines and this allowed me to advance um, uh, into these areas to get closer to, closer to Leningrad and also to uh, take Kubona and um, Novaya uh, Ladoga. Uh, they were by securing two out of the three ports that the Russians, that the Soviets could have used to, to supply Ozinoviets and from there the um, entire uh, Leningrad area. And yeah, here I also took two divisions, uh, sorry, three divisions here in this um, in this pocket. And uh, yeah, th this is just like a zoom in over the uh, um, Leningrad area. And uh, having consolidated my gains, I did try once to um, uh, launch some air interdiction missions around those Zinoviets, but um, because of the um, uh, Soviet Air Force in these airfields of uh, Siastroy and uh, Tikhvin, uh, this operation turned out to be too costly for me. 
And so I, I decided to plan something more um, ambitious than just um, launching air interdictions uh, over here. Um, the 18th army got closer and broke through the, the first line of uh, fortifications and uh, because of the terrain I realized that maybe the, um, the panzers were not really the, the best units um, suited for this kind of uh, offensive. And so at the end of, uh, of August I pulled out of the line the third panzer group while I and I, I removed the assault status from the third panzer group and I gave it to the 18th army. Now this is also something that I could have done in my earlier attempt with Odessa. I just it, it just didn't cross my mind to um, demote one of the panzer groups from the assault status and give the 11th army the assault uh, status. The 18th army broke through the very first line of defense and I was very happy to see that the 86th Infantry Division uh, managed to cut the Oranienbaum area uh, between uh, yeah, to, to, to slice in between the Oranienbaum fortress and the, the city of uh, of Leningrad. And meanwhile, I also assigned plenty of um, pioneer um, battalions and heavy artillery units to the 41st um, Army Corps because my um, my goal was to um, yeah, suffer heavy losses with the Luftwaffe to bomb these three infantry, uh, sorry, these rifle divisions here and then um, um, bypass the Volkov River and reach Siastroy. And uh, uh, yeah, I again consolidated my, uh, my gains and then yeah, the 41st um, Army Corps attacked on a narrow front with uh, all of its three um, uh, divisions and then the, once again the, the 6th Panzer Division took uh, Siostroy from the uh, Red uh, from, from, from the Red Army and um, pretty much nothing uh, happened besides me managing to crossing the uh, Neva River um, let's say um, east of Leningrad which was a quite important um, achievement for me because I was not, not expecting to, to get this far so uh, so fast and then uh, once again I um, uh, bombed the uranium bomb um, uh, the uh, uranium bomb fortress and let me just quickly show you the results yeah so here are the uh, results again just one uh, one uh, uh, turn in three days of, of bombing I lost two planes while the enemy lost quite I would say a big chunk of um, of, of men and uh, and guns, and when I attacked the um, Rannenbaum fortress, n not with the entire 18th army, with just a few divisions of the 18th army, um, yeah, I managed to, at the loss of just 800, of less than a thousand men, I could get rid of um, 40, nearly 43,000, and basically all of their guns and I reduced the fortification from, from level 5 to, to, to level 0 in one single shot. I was extremely proud of that um, result. And uh, uh, then, yeah, I occupied uh, Ranibam and with the uh, Totenkopf division I even crossed the, the Neva south of um, Osinoviets. And then, as you can see, the weather started turning into a let's say the typical autumn weather with uh, rain and this rain just forced me to uh, to hold all uh, operations I could not let my pl um, my, my planes fly and uh, yeah so I, I decided to just pull back the 18th army over here uh, to just let it rest and recover uh, uh, CPPs uh, and then yeah I just waited and waited and waited and waited even more until the, the very first snow came on the ground and however um, uh, this um, let's say the the arrival of, of, of winter was not say so welcomed by the Soviets because uh, throughout all these turns the Soviet never received any kind of um, supplies nor any kind of supply nor uh, reinforcement and uh, when I um, took control of Leningrad, yeah, as you can see the uh, the results were quite massive, all these these four infantry divisions were basically completely 
um, depleted and nothing really could stop the attack of nine infantry divisions of the re of the 18th army all filled up with once again with pioneer um, battalions and so th this is how um, I took uh, Leningrad and now it's time to talk about the last um, uh, target which was Sevastopol so for the siege of Sevastopol um, because this was my very first attempt doing something big um, in a grand campaign I I don't know I I felt at the beginning that um, the first panzer group was not strong enough to um, allow a quick advance into Ukraine so I, I did something that many of you may criticize uh, and which I realized maybe too late that it was a big mistake uh, but what essentially was to transfer the 46th motorized army corps from the second panzer group to the first uh, panzer group before doing anything else and because yeah i was like um sure in this way i can have a stronger first first panzer group i can push deeper into ukraine and um and then so yeah and <clears throat> and importantly I also assigned to the um, to the first uh, Panzer Group HQ every available um, railroad repair battalion, like the uh, Reich Arbeitsdienst and the um, Organisation Todt that were spread between Army Group South, the OKH, and then I also took the ones from the other armies and I I put them into the OKH, and then on, on the second turn I assigned them all to the uh, first panzer group because I was like maybe in this way I can kind of prioritize and I, I can guide the AI to, to repair the, the railways in southern Ukraine to um, speed up the uh, logistics uh, in, uh, in Ukraine. Um, again the opening of Barbarossa was nothing too spectacular with the big difference this time that I pushed all of my panzer units um, um, eastwards and this one here was the 14th panzer division that took um, Rovno because the idea was to link up to in a much bigger pocket uh, with the Romanians advancing from the south and this is precisely uh, what happened um, on turn uh, number two um, <clears throat> now this pocket was quite big there were more than 40 Red Army divisions and uh, brigades and it, it took me a while to um, clear it up and while the Red Army initially responded by deploying tons of troops along these um, uh, axis of, of, um, of advance over here uh, with the support of the Luftwaffe I slowly but surely began to uh, clear out this pocket. I used the entire 17th Army um, two army corps of the 6th army and even the, I think this is the, uh, I forgot about the name, uh, but this is the only infantry corps, infantry army corps of the 1st uh, panzer group. And again, like I just kept uh, clearing and bombing and clearing and bombing the, um, the, um, the pocket. Uh, to the point uh, when I realized, oh cool, the, the Red Army did a massive pullback um, operation and uh, this allowed me to push my um, my my panzers north um, eastwards and to reach to kind of reach um, uh, Kiev and because of this uh, push I had to wait for the uh, first um, sorry this was the 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 third FPD this was the the, the first one because yeah I didn't mention but I also moved uh, from army group uh, center the um, the third FPD and then I just kept repairing the uh, railways as much as possible to the point that I could manage uh, to I could finally uh, deploy some depots and uh, bring some supplies to the first uh, panzer group uh, once again using the infantry of the sixth army I um, uh, let's say I I opened the breach exactly sorry it was here I opened the breach and then my, I let my <coughs> my uh, most of my panzers and motorized infantry divisions to 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 advance um, um, eastwards while I temporarily motorized I think it was the 44th infantry division and I used it to to link up with the Romanians and one division of the 11th army uh, all temporarily motorized 
coming in from the south and once again I dropped um, all these Red Army uh, units into this big uh, pocket. Uh, and while I was clearing, I was busy clearing out uh, this pocket, I even pushed further east my first uh, panzer group. I took a Kremenchuk on the other, other on, the, on the other side of the of the Dnieper, while the <coughs> 25th Motorized Infantry Division had the honor of taking uh, the Dnipropetrovsk. And it was at this point that I realized that uh, I might have overstretched my lines because uh, during the Soviet turn, the Soviets just uh, pulled back from uh, from this uh, region here, and they isolated my um, Panzers and motorized infantry divisions um, here in this area. So I said, okay, maybe I have to be more uh, careful. So I re-established um, communications with the, um, the first Panzer group, um, and then I just um, kept clearing this pocket. And then I pushed with um, most of my Panzers, <coughs> with all but the third motorized army corps. Um, across the, the Dnieper at Kherson, and then I kept pouring down the 17th army, which, which, which was a kind of a, of a mistake, because then I had to pull it pull it back um, here, and importantly, the um, 11th army, which in this case received the assault status instead of the, let's say, let's say taken from the uh, third um, uh, panzer group. Um, and then once again, I tried to use my third motorized army corps to cut um, the enemy um, at Mariupol, but once again, when when the so when when it was the Soviet turn, the Soviets had enough troops to break through my my pocket into two, uh, actually three sections, and once again this isolated the uh, the third motorized army corps units. But in the south, uh, I got the biggest um, and more interesting results because the um, Viking motorized uh, division of the SS. Uh, broke through the Perikop Isthmus, which was defended by the local fort and by the 5th Cavalry uh, Division. And this victory allowed the 11th Panzer Division and the 60th Motorized Infantry Division to just, um, let's say, advance rapidly into uh, Crimea and take control of uh, Simferopol. And yeah, that was just a <coughs> uh, zoom in. Uh, sorry, no, no not get Simferopol. Uh, but yeah, so this is just a zoom in of the uh, situation in uh, Crimea. The entire 11th army took control of the bulk of central Crimea, while the 60th infantry division uh, uh, reached Sevastopol by severing this uh, railway line. So once again, Sevastopol could only be resupplied by, uh, by sea. And uh, uh, yeah, the 11th army uh, closed in. Uh, and then I realized I had to dispatch some units here because in one of my attempts I saw that the Soviets were advancing and trying to cut out my 11th army um, basically around uh, this X here and around uh, Jankoy. Uh, and then once again I brought in the um, heavy boys, the Fliegerführer Ostsee, the uh, 51st and the 27th um, uh, Kampfgeschwader equipped with uh, sea mines to perform um, interdiction operations around these three uh, hexes. Again, these are the these are the three hexes that can be used by the Soviets to, to resupply um, Sevastopol. And yeah, I dispatched three, um, one inf two infantry and two mountain divisions um, taken from the 17th Army, while the rest of the 11th Army was just uh, sitting here, getting supplied and. Um, receiving yeah uh, reinforcements notably um, here in this uh, Sarabuts I think it's called yes in Sarabuts I also left the the first FBD in order to, to drag uh, freight to this um, uh, rail yard and this uh, depot here and yeah as you can see by constantly um, harassing the uh, these three hexes I could totally isolate Sevastopol it, uh, it's highlighted because of this uh, button here um, and uh, last but not least I also brought forward directly in Crimea the 54th Kampfgeschwader uh, equipped with the um, infamous one one ton bombs that I used to 
um, uh, say, pound from hell, from from heaven, the uh, defenders of Sevastopol. And here is um, I did it for four turns because the defenses of, of Sevastopol were um, quite strong, I must say. And this is these are some of the results of uh, one of my many uh, sorties. You can see here plenty of losses. Again, plenty of losses uh, here, um, here as well, and uh, also I think exactly here. That was I think with the the the, the biggest um, airstrike I could have ever done because uh, I've never seen 1,200 men uh, wiped out into in one single uh, airstrike, and that I think that was, that was because I I could master nearly I would say 300 uh, bombers. And so, uh, turn after turn after turn, um, when I felt that the garrison has been uh, weakened enough, and when I saw that most of the uh, 18th army was now uh, ready and had uh, 100 combat preparation points, I launched my attack against uh, Sevastopol, and as you can see, I, um, I won the battle. Um, for whatever reason, the divisions here got routed, and... Uh, yeah, so that's that was basically the um, final um, uh, result of the battle, and once again I managed to, to bring a level five fortification to um, to level zero. Surprisingly enough, I did not see any impact of my heavy artillery, which was let's say brought forward, uh, most likely because the heavy artillery did not pass the leader checks to to be committed into into battle. But anyway. That was quite a um, successful um, attack, and in general, what, what I concluded from these three mini campaigns was that, um, in theory, it is possible if you carefully micromanage your pioneer uh, battalions. It is possible to um, take Odessa and Leningrad um, on the very first uh, year in 1941. Um, I don't think it's possible to take Sevastopol as well. In, uh, um, in 1941, but maybe I'm wrong, maybe I need to uh, optimize my strategies, but uh, yeah, so th th that's how I took these three objectives, and uh, yeah, I hope you folks enjoyed the video, and of course, let me know in the comments below um, how you managed to do it, and if you know any faster and better strategy on how to achieve these, well, I'm, I'm eager to know it. And uh, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for supporting the channel, I wish you all the best, and uh, I hope to see you soon in the next episode.